Hello everyone, these are the 6.2 guided notes types of reactions. By the end of this activity, you'll be able to answer the guiding question, what are the different types of chemical reactions and how can we distinguish between them given a chemical reaction? You can watch the video that demonstrates and um, shows you examples, like actual lab examples of each of the different um, reaction types. So chemists classify reactions by their basic format. There are five that we will discuss in this class, composition or synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. Now there are categories of chemical reactions that overarch these two and these, uh, these five, technically two of them, and they can be grouped into those. Those are metathesis and redox reactions, but we don't need to do that for the class. And then there are subcategories for some of these as well. We are just going to focus on these five. So if you are looking at other resources, you only have to focus on these five. Be aware that there are others, but these are the ones that we will go through. Okay, so composition is also called synthesis or combination reactions. This is where we combine two or more elements as reactants to form one compound as a product. So we have our model here where we see A and B combining to form the compound AB. In the real world, as an example, is the formation of ammonia from the elements nitrogen and hydrogen. And we see that in the example at the top of this slide. Please note that you may have to use ion charges to predict products if you're not provided a formula directly. Okay, but we covered all of that in a previous unit where we looked at unit four writing and naming different compounds. Okay, so an example. Write the uh, reaction for xenon gas reacting with fluorine gas to form the compound xenon tetrafluoride. So if we have xenon gas, so that's Xe and G for gas, so if it gives me a state of matter for it, I'm going to write a state of matter in the reaction. So it's going to react with, so that tells me I need a plus sign, fluorine gas, so that is F2 gas, and then it's going to form or produce, so that means I need an arrow, xenon, now remember non-covalent uh, nom nomenclature, if there was no prefix that was just one of the element, and then the prefix on fluorine tells me I have tetra means four fluorines. And because the reactants are gases, I can write that xenon tetrafluoride is a gas. So for this, generally, if it's given to you, you must write the state of matter. If it's not, you can make an educated guess or leave it off. Our last step for this is to figure out whether or not it's balanced. So we take out an inventory. And we see that fluorine is not balanced, so we'll balance it. Two goes into four, two times, and we update our inventory, and now it is balanced. Moving on, we have decomposition. So if composition puts things together, decomposition takes them apart. So it is the reverse of the previous reaction type. A larger molecule then breaks down into multiple, two or more smaller molecules or atoms. So the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, that's what H2O2 is. If you watch the vid video, this was the elephant toothpaste demonstration. And they use a catalyst to speed up that reaction soap to capture all the air bubbles from uh, oxygen gas. Something to always remember is we have diatomic elements. That means that if I say oxygen gas, it means I'm referring to this, that these elements, when I say the element name, 
they always come in pairs. Okay, for these one, there's seven of them. A mnemonic, and we've covered it briefly, but a mnemonic I gave you was Hofbrinkel. Which, my chlorine is running off, that's a CL over there. Um, this is a mnemonic to remember the seven that form uh, diatomic elements. So they never come alone, they're always paired. Um, then some exception rules. There's some other stuff here, but some exception rules. These, you don't have to memorize them. Just be aware that there are exception rules. And if you ask me why, hey, why does this happen like that? Da, 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 I will tell you, hey, remember we went over an exception rule. This is where that comes in. Okay, so some more examples. Write the reaction for solid potassium chlorate when it is heated to decompose into solid potassium chloride and oxygen gas. So I have potassium chlorate, so C KCLO3, and it says it's a solid, and I'm going to heat it. So I can say at plus heat, or you can leave off the heat part. So this is kind of optional. And then it produces or decomposes into potassium chloride solid and oxygen gas. Now I check if it's balanced. And I see that it is not with oxygen. So since oxygen is only in one spot on both sides, I'm, I can use the least common multiple. And that tells me I need a two here to make that side six and a three over here to make this side six. But that changed the potassium and the chlorine as well. So I need to finish balancing by putting a two in front of potassium chloride. And now it is balanced. In another example, write the reaction for solid copper two oxide. So CuO solid. When it is heated and it decomposes into copper solid and oxygen gas. Now oxygen gas, remember, is a diatomic element. So that means it comes in a pair. So now we check if it's balanced. It is not here, so I'm going to write a 2 to balance oxygen. And that changes copper, so I put another 2 here to finish balancing. In single replacement, now we have replacement. That word is synonymous with exchange or displacement. And these are used depending on who is talking about it. They're all used interchangeably. Just be aware that they're there. Um, so in this one, one compound, so single, one compound is going to replace one of its members or exchange one of its members or one of its members will be displaced. That's why all three of those are synonymous. So in this, we see that C and B will displace. How these know whether or not they will displace or replace, so it is based off of the like most element. So like will replace like. So if you have a metal here or non-metal and a non-metal here and a metal for A, the two non-metals will switch. However, if it's a metal, it'll switch with the metal. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So for this one, we see hydrogen. Now using our periodic table, we can see that hydrogen has a plus one and chlorine has a minus one. And then magnesium, when it forms a compound, it has a plus two charge. So the positive charges are more like each other than the negative. So those two are going to switch when we replace and form a new compound. And since hydrogens by itself, it forms the diatomic element. So make sure you're not forgetting about diatomic elements. And notice how we used ion charges up there to predict compounds. So it's coming back. Make sure you're using your periodic table and it's labored appropriately with the charges and that you have the key polyatomic ions on the back of your periodic table as I asked you to put them, uh, I think, back in January. 
so some more examples. Write the reaction for a solution of copper 2 nitrate. So copper 2 nitrate. And it says solution, that means aqueous, that's AQ. And solid zinc metal, so ZN solid. Now it doesn't tell me what my products are, so I have to figure that out. So remember that you uh, like replaces like. And another thing to remember is to assign charges. Now in the name copper, it tells me that copper forms a 2 plus charge. We also can see from the subscript on nitrate that that is copper's charge. And since there's an invisible one here, that is nitrate's charge. And that is also supposed to be on the back of your periodic table. Then zinc forms a 2 plus charge. I would give you that or have it written somewhere as a reference, okay? Or give you a reference card with ions if I'm expecting that. So now we see that copper and zinc both being metals and forming positive charges. Now I don't care about the quantity of the charge, I care about the sign. I'm going to switch spots. So I write the zinc and nitrate. Notice I'm not carrying the subscript on nitrate over, I'm just bringing over the entirety of nitrate. So another thing to pay attention to is we don't carry subscripts over. Except except those that are a part of the polyatomic ion. So NO3 nitrate is a polyatomic ion. I bring the three over because that's what makes nitrate nitrate. That is not the charge on nitrate ever. Okay, I don't bring the two over because that's how I balance nitrate's charge it, it for copper. And then we have copper. And now copper on its own is a solid. We don't know what this one is. But we could say it's aqueous because on the other side, nitrate was in an aqueous compound. Now we need to charge balance this. And we see that they are not equal, 2 plus and 1 minus. So I'm going to trade. 2 comes over here, and the 1 would come down here, but I don't have to write it. So that gives me 2 positives and 2 negatives, which combine to give me 0. I'm going to clean this up real quick. And I'm going to now balance my reaction. So counting everything, I see I have one copper, two nitrates, and one zinc. And on the other side, I have one copper, two nitrates, and one zinc. So this is already balanced. Now for our next one, a reaction for solid sodium metal. So sodium is Na reacting with water. and that's an L liquid, produces or forms hydrogen gas. Now hydrogen is a diatomic element, so that's H2, and then sodium hydroxide. Sodium is Na, and because it's an ionic compound, metal and nonmetal, I put the charge at the top so I know what it is. And then hydroxide is OH, it's one of the ones you're supposed to write, and I write that charge. Now we compare these two, and we see that they are equal and opposite, so they do cancel out, and I do not need to trade them. I'm not given a state for this one, so I can leave it off. Now I need to check if it's balanced. So I have one sodium, two hydrogens, and one oxygen on the reactant side. One sodium, three hydrogens, and one oxygen on the product side. So I see hydrogen is not balanced. 
However, I cannot do, let's go to six for these or go to a least common multiple because I don't have one spot to write it in. So instead I have to use a fraction. So looking here, two, right? If I took the hydrogen molecule and I cut it in half, so I got rid of half of it. So I put one half here. I now have one hydrogen molecule here or atom, one atom there and one hydrogen atom there, which tells me I have two. So by using the one half, I now have two, but I cannot keep that. So I'm gonna multiply the entire reaction by two. So two times one is two. One half of two is one. And then two times one is two. And now we check if it's balanced. Two, four, two, two, four, and two. And it is balanced. Our next example is replacement. Again, this can be exchange or displacement. And this is similar to the previous one, except that you have two compounds that are going to switch or exchange partners, not one. So double meaning two compounds. So we look here and we see that two partners are going to switch. And again, it is going to be like, replaces like, or exchange with like. So when we look at this, we see lead forms a two plus and nitrate forms a one minus, and hydrogen is a one plus and chlorine is a one minus. So when we switch hydrogen and lead are going to trade partners, and we see them in the other's place. And then we balance the charge based off of the charge on the cation and the anion, the new anion together. So again, make sure you use charges to predict the compounds. Both, uh, And then there are a couple subcategories for this, but you don't need to directly like always remember those. This is technically a precipitation reaction. And then there are acid-base reactions. And if we get to that, we'll discuss it further. Okay, so we're going to write the reaction for a solution of copper 2 sulfate. So it's a solution, so CuSO4. And then solution is aqueous, reacting with solid zinc hydroxide. And it's a solid. So again, I'm not given the product, but I can figure that out. So sulfur ions, and it tells me also that copper has a 2 plus. So 2 plus for copper and all sulfur ions are 2 minus. So sulfide, sulfite, sulfate, they're all 2 minus. And that's the group uh, that sulfur is in is in group 6. So they all form 2 minus charges. And then zinc, we see down here the 2. So this has a 2 plus charge. And then hydroxide should be on your periodic table on the back as a 1 minus. So we see we're going to switch the positive charges. Oops. OK. So we're going to have now zinc, sulfate, and copper hydroxide. So I've switched my ions. Now I need to check that their charges are balanced. So I reassign their charges. So zinc was 2. Sulfur was 2. Those are balanced and cancel out, so I don't need to trade them. Then I look at copper and hydroxide. They do not cancel out, so I'm going to trade. So the two comes down, and the one would come down, but it's already there, but invisible. So we now have positive two and negative two to give us zero. So this is now balanced charge-wise. So now we need to check that the whole reaction is balanced. And when we do that, we see we have one copper, one sulfur, four oxygen here. So one copper, one sulfate, one copper, one sulfate, one zinc, and then two hydroxides. So this is indeed balanced. Okay, 
Write the reaction for a solution of hydrochloric acid, so solution, HCl, of hydrochloric acid, and lithium hydroxide. Now, we can probably assume that lithium hydroxide is a, a solution, but you can also leave it blank. Okay, so our first step is to assign charges here. So lithium is in group 1A, so it's a plus 1, and then hydroxide from above was minus 1. So the positives are going to switch. Okay, and that means we have lithium chloride first plus H. OH, and if we simplify that, we see we have two hydrogens, so that is H2O, and that's water. Okay, so you made water. And we know that in HOH, that's a 1 plus and a 1 minus, so they add to 0. And then here, this is a 1 plus and a 1 minus, and they add to 0, so they cancel out and are already charge balanced. So our last step now is to check and see if everything else is balanced. So two hydrogen, one oxygen, one chlorine, and one lithium. So this is balanced as well. Okay, finally, combustion. Um, this is a reaction between a hydrocarbon fuel and oxygen. So it all, all combustions, all combustions always react with oxygen. Combustion of hydrocarbons always produce carbon dioxide and water. The hydrocarbon can also sometimes contain oxygen in the compound. Okay, so don't get confused if you see oxygen in there. You're focusing on the fact that carbon and hydrogen are the primary components of that compound. So in the combustion of methane, we see this happening. It always reacts with oxygen and always produces carbon dioxide and water. Notice, though, that the states of matter are gases, especially for water. It has a lot of energy, so water will be a water vapor or gas through the reaction and could condense on the sides of a container um, afterwards. So oxygen is always a reactant, and for these carbon and water, carbon dioxide and water are always the products. Um, and I already went over the rest for that. So we're going to write a reaction for the combustion of acetylene gas. So acetylene gas, and since it's a combustion reaction that always reacts with oxygen gas, and it's a combustion of a hydrocarbon, so it always produces carbon dioxide and water. So now we're going to check that it is balanced. And then one two, and then three oxygen. So it is not balanced. I'm going to start with carbon. One goes into two, two times. So this changes to two, and oxygen changes to five. Four plus one from water is five. Now we look, we see that these do not go in evenly, so we're going to still take that process and say five halves. But now we're going to multiply by two. Now, fractions are like middle school, elementary school, so we got to jump back in time a little bit. And we'll multiply everything by 2 to keep it all the same, because this tells me I have 5 here. If I have 5 halves of an O2 molecule, the 2s cancel. So multiplying by 2, I have 2 here. And then 5 halves times 2 is technically 2 over 1. And when we multiply fractions, these can cancel and that gives me 5. So this is technically 2 over 1. Okay, and so then this becomes 5O2, and then 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 1 is 2. And now we check, we have 4, 4, 10, and then 4, 4, and then 8 and 2 is 10, and that is now balanced. Okay, so then we have combustion of a metal. This is synonymous with synthesis. So the first reaction type we talked about of a metal oxide. 
So the synthesis part is referring to what you make, a metal oxide. So this is copper two oxide. So the synthesis of a metal oxide. Either one of those labels, so if you called this a, a synthesis reaction, I would give you credit, unless I explicitly say it combusts with oxygen. You would also get credit for a metal reacting with oxygen to produce the metal oxide, the combustion of a metal as well. So we can use either one to describe the reaction. Okay, so writing the reaction for a combustion of a solid iron metal, so iron solid, and it's combusting to form iron 3 oxide, so Fe2O3 solid. Now when we combust, we always react with oxygen gas, so we have to add that. And then we check that it's balanced. And we see that it is not, so starting at the top, 1 goes into 2, 2 times. And then 2 and 3, we're going to do the least common multiple because oxygen is in one spot. So 2 goes into 6 three times, and then 3 goes into 6 two times, but that changed my iron to 4, so 2 goes into 4 two times. So I'm going to multiply 2 times 2 to give me 4, and that updates my amount of iron to 4. Okay, and now it is balanced. One more. Oh, so I do. It's not one more. So I do. We are going to write and balance the equation that would take place between magnesium metal and phosphoric acid. So magnesium metal, and we would assume that that is a solid, because magnesium is a solid at room temperature. It's a metal. Plus phosphoric acid. So H. 3PO4, and for something to be considered acidic, it needs to actually be in water. It's part of a property of an acid, but we aren't covering that right now, except to write AQ, aqueous. Okay, so we need to write and balance this equation. So we look at this, and we see we have something that is on the left side and something else that's on the left side. So these can switch spots, the hydrogen and the magnesium, because if we assign charges, we see, and I'm going to write this back up on top, we see that phosphate has a 3 minus charge, hydrogen has a 1 plus, and magnesium has a 2 plus. So the best reaction to form between these two is that they would switch spots. So that would give me hydrogen by itself, which would be hydrogen gas, plus magnesium with phosphate. Okay, and so now we need to check that they are, their charges cancel out. They do not, so I'm going to trade, so the 3 comes down, and then the 2 comes over to phosphate, so that I have 3 times positive 2 is positive 6, and 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 to give me 0. So those are now balanced charge-wise. Now I check my reaction. I'm going to clean up, oops, a little bit. And I'm going to take my inventory. You do not have to clean up on your paper, but for cleanness so you can read what I'm writing, I am. So magnesium, hydrogen, and then because phosphate stays the same on both sides of the reaction, I'm going to keep it together. I can only do this if I don't see uh, phosphorus and oxygen separate on one side and together on another. You can also do them separately like balance them separately, phosphorus and oxygen. I'm going to keep them together to show in a different way to um, ease some of your workload. So there is one phosphate polyatomic ion over here, so I write a 1. And remember the 4 indicates the number of oxygen in phosphate, making it phosphate, not that you have 4 of them. That would require parentheses, which is over on the right-hand side, so I have 2 phosphate there. 2 hydrogen, and 3 magnesium. So starting at the top, 1 goes into 3, 3 times. Skipping hydrogen for last, 1 goes into 2, 2 times. So I have 2 phosphate and 6 hydrogen. And then 2 goes into 6, 3 times to make that 6 hydrogen. And now it is balanced. And because you weren't given a state of matter here, you do not need to put one. Okay.
write and balance the equation that would take place between sodium bromide. Oh, and we didn't identify the type of reaction. I'm sorry. This would be because one compound switches single replacement. Okay, write and balance a reaction between sodium bromide and silver chlorate. A precipitate of silver bromide will form. So precipitate means solid and then some sort of aqueous solution. So that tells me that there is a second compound along with an aqueous solution. There is a compound that will form as well, another one, but it's going to be dissolved in water. Okay, so we look at this, we see silver and bromide are now together, which tells me that these two are switching. So if I have a switch that's a replacement type, and because there's two compounds, it's double. So double replacement, which means I also need to assign charges. So using the periodic table, chlorine ions have a one minus charge. Okay, so chlorate has a one minus. So we're switching sodium and silver. So silver bromide, and then I write what's left over, the sodium and chlorate. And I check the charges, one plus one minus, one plus one minus, and they all cancel out. Then I check to see if they are balanced, and I see that I have one sodium, one bromine on both sides, one silver on both sides, one chlorine on both sides, and three oxygen. So this is also balanced. Finally, write and balance the equation that would take place between ethene, so C2H4, and oxygen gas. So what I see is I have a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen. This tells me it is combustion. And if you want to be specific, it's of a hydrocarbon. But what I would be looking for is the combustion. So since it's of a hydrocarbon, we know it is always going to produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay. So now our next step is to balance, so C-H-O, counting two, four, two, one, two, three. So balance carbon, one goes into two, two times. That changes car uh, oxygen to five. Then I balance hydrogen, two goes into four, two times. And I recount oxygen again, four plus two is six. So two goes into six three times. And this is now, oop, update my inventory, balanced. So now you're going to work on the you do. You can rewatch the video as needed and check, uh, check your answers with the work in the front. And don't forget that when you are finished, you answer the guiding question, what are the different types of chemical reactions and how can we distinguish between them given a chemical reaction. So you're gonna explain the process you've taken to complete the you do's. Okay, that should take you at least two to three sentences at the end. Okay, thank you guys.